Hi everyone, Mike here from Comp3 Interactive. Welcome back to the channel. This week we've got a uh, pixel art tutorial rather than a Unity tutorial, but at the end of the video I will show you this going into Unity so you can see how useful this kind of technique is. So let me start at the beginning. I have a dungeon tile set available for sale on my itch page, and I've had a few questions on how I managed to make it so seamless. Now, I could tell you to go and buy it and find out for yourself, but I'm not a monster. So in this video, I'm going to walk you through the basics of how I created the floors and the walls in that asset pack. And if you like how it looks, I'll put a link in the description if you're interested in the full pack. Now the full pack contains over 900 tiles including floors, walls, traps, weapons, pickups, coins and so on. So go and check that out and see if it's something that you're looking for for your game. And finally, just before we get into it, I just want to thank Gigatank3000 for sponsoring this video. I've got the links in the description to the website and the Twitter. Go and check the blog out. Go and check them out on Twitter, see what they're up to. Get updates on the latest games. Anyway, enough advertising. Let's get into it. So there's a few things that we need to think about before we even start making a design like this. So we're going to need some walls, obviously. And they're going to need to be in all four directions, so up, down, left and right. We're also going to need these sort of corner pieces just to polish off that edge. And that's the same for, again, all four directions. And we could leave it at that, that'd be fine, but that would only allow us to build square rooms. And we want something a little bit more dynamic like this. So we'll also be creating inverted tiles so we can change the direction of our walls whenever we like such as here. You wouldn't be able to get this section identical if you didn't have these inverted edges. So in total, in this tutorial, we're going to make 14 tiles. Now that's the bare minimum of what you need for this kind of style. So it's going to be one plain floor design, one plain wall design, eight standard wall edges, and then another four inverted wall edges. And then after we've got all that, we can go in and we can design a few more floor variants and wall variants, but we'll stick to the basics just for now. So let's open up a new canvas. Now this is 80 pixels by 48, and this will fit all of our tiles inside. And I'll be using a very restricted colour palette of just four colours, and I'll pop those up on screen with all the values so you can play along with me. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a basic wall tile. And we'll do this down at the bottom over here. So we want this to be 16 by 16 for each tile. As you can see in this, if I turn on the grid, every one of these tiles is in their own 16 by 16 grid. I have it set up so my background alpha, well, lack of alpha layer is 16 by 16. And again, you can see the blue lines toggling when I turn the grid on. Perfect. And we'll make the wall four bricks high, four rows of bricks high. So 16 divided by four is four. Quick maths. So we'll just go ahead and we'll start by drawing our bottom line. So that's one of our four rows of pixels. So then we'll count up one, two, three, and then the one above four again. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And then we'll just throw in some vertical lines and then match those on the second set of bricks. It's already coming along. So we'll go ahead and we'll take a second darkest colour and we'll make sure that we don't fill outside of our gap. So we'll add these in and then we'll just go ahead and fill all of that open space. Next we'll take the second lightest and we'll just add a highlight on the top of each of the bricks. Perfect, so believe it or not, that's our wall completed. And if we just copy and paste this we can see that it's perfectly seamless. But we do see, actually, we have an extended brick in the middle here. So what we can do to get around that, right on the very edge of these, this first and second uh, first and third rows we'll just add that extra line in there and we're probably going to need to move these over one as well just to try and keep the bricks the same size 
So let's try that again. We take this, we can copy and paste this out. Oh, that's looking a lot better already. All right, we'll get rid of those. Next, we're gonna go into this big area here. This one's gonna require a three by three, so nine tiles, but we won't actually be populating the middle one for now. So this section is gonna be our generic eight tiles for our standard square wall edges. So we'll use our center square as our reference as if this is a singular floor tile. So the surrounding tiles are actually gonna be the wall. So this will be the top left corner, top right corner, bottom right corner, bottom left corner, and then these will be your left side, right side, top wall, and then bottom wall. So the first thing we're gonna do, we're just gonna create an outline around that middle square. So we'll do this top row first. So we're gonna try and keep, or we're not gonna try, we are gonna keep all of our pixels inside this 16 by 16 grid. So we can just go in with our darker color for now. And just to keep everything in tune with each other, I'm gonna to keep to the four pixel height, not including this darker color right here. So here, right next to the edge, we can do one, two, three, four pixels. So that's gonna be the height of our top wall, or the top wall edge, should I say, not the wall itself. And then we want two bricks for our wall edge. So we'll count in eight, we'll divide 16 by two. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And we'll add another brick in there as well. And we'll just go in and fill in our brick color. And just to add that bit of depth to it, we'll take our highlight color, our lightest color, and just add a little bit of an accent around it like that. So now that's our top wall done. If we, again, grab that and paste that in, we see that it just lines up with the wall that we've already created down here. Now, I won't do that every time. We'll just go through and we'll start designing the rest of these. One thing I will say, not every one of these edges is going to need this harsh black edge. Now, the reason for that is our floor is going to have a dark division in between it, and we don't want to end up with a floor tile that also has this dark edge, and then in our game we have a weird double black pixel like this. Just doesn't look that nice, so if you're following along, just make sure that you take note of where I actually remove this dark outline. And I'm actually going to start by removing the right side. Ooh, need the eraser for that. I'm going to remove the right side and the bottom side from our center square outline. Now you'll see why I've done that when we're finished. But just trust me, do it. Okay, so we'll go ahead and we'll take this second to darkest color and we'll add in our four pixels. So one, two, three, four. Then again, Count up eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now you don't need to be this perfect. I just like the look of uh, how the finished product is. So now we'll work on both this right side and this upper right corner. We'll take our brick color and I'm gonna leave one pixel empty in the corner just to give it that rounded edge. And then finish off the rest of these bricks. Then again, bearing in mind your light, so our light seems to be coming from the bottom right, so the right side and the underside are highlighted. So we'll copy that over onto this one as well, so the right side and the underside, right side and underside, and again, keeping in mind just to keep this one pixel, just to add that bit of depth to it. Now we'll go on to our left side, so again, one, two, three, four, five this time, bear in mind we're not counting this dark edge. And then we can finish that one off and then bring this down and drop that in. And then we can just go in and add our shadow lines. And just like we've done before, we'll add in our highlights on the left side and the bottom side. I've gone one too far on that, we'll bring all of that back in. There we go, that's looking a lot better. 
Now our bottom side is actually going to be slightly different because we're going to want to see bricks on this whereas these are just the outlines. So what we can do, we can take a copy of our wall layer. What I'm going to do, I'm just going to bring in this bottom row by one just so it's not an identical height to the rest of the walls. And I'm also just going to move that one down as well. Now all we should need to do is, if we copy our topmost tile and bring this down, and if we match the edge line to this 16 by 16 area here, we should have our bottom wall completed. Now like I said, we don't have the dark outline here because the floor is going to have that dark line there so we don't want that double black pixel when we use this in game. And then finally for this section we've just got these two bottom right and bottom left corners. Now these are probably the most complicated ones and I spent quite a bit of time tinkering with this trying to get it to look perfect. So the way that I'll do this, I'll just show you the final way that I settled on that I think looks the best. So what I did, I brought in this edge by one pixel and moved these two over. This is just to add a bit of difference between this one and the top one so they don't actually look identical. But now because we've moved this one over, we're going to need this edge to actually have the shadow. So we can add in the shadow on the right hand side here and we're also going to need it for this top one as well. Next we'll just use our standard brick colour to finish off that corner piece and add our highlighting. Now for the edges we're going to want a little bit of a curve so it looks like we have a fully rounded edge. And the way we can do that is if we take our dark brick colour here, we'll add in one pixel higher than the rest. And we make sure that we do that down at the bottom as well and then we can just follow suit all the way up and then add in our shadow colours to match what they are on the standard brick. So we are actually looking really good though, we've got a little curve going on our edge. So we'll quickly just do the same for this left side and then our outer walls are complete. So we'll grab this medium dark, add in our edges on both sides again grab our darkest and knock it up by one pixel. Add our highlight and then do as we did before by dragging out those edges. And then we'll just add one extra line on the edge there just because this brick was looking quite long. It's all about little trial and error like that. You see as it's going on and then you can just amend it on the fly. So that is our outer wall and our standard wall completed. So just so we can test this out, we'll go ahead and we'll create our floor tile. So if we just enable the grid here, we can see that we can fit our floor tile inside this centre spot right here. So we'll start by filling in the centre with this colour. Then we'll add that outline to the right and bottom side of our floor. So now when we tile that, we won't actually hit that odd double pixel. And then just to make it a little bit more interesting, we can add a lighter highlight to it as well. So that's our basic floor. And now the final thing that we've got to do up in this section of four up here is we've got to do our inverted tiles. So the way that I'm going to do that, I'm going to copy this wall twice for the top sides. So these are going to be the tiles, let me find an example, such as these. So we see we have a lower edge of the wall and then a 90 degree wall edge on the top right. And we should, unless I've not actually put it in this example, have the same kind of thing but flipped as well. So why do we do that? Well, we've got our two walls here. So these are going to be our two top halves. And we'll get our wall edge colour and just fill some of these in. So now we've kept with our 4 pixel height for the wall edge and then we just need to do this again for our left side and our right side over here. Now we're going to want some edges on this so we'll just box out this left and right side of our wall 
And we're also going to want a dark edge down this right hand side. But that means we're going to have to move in uh, pixels by one. So we still have a four pixel wall edge. Now this edge is actually going to continue down onto our bottom right and across to the bottom side of our bottom left as well. So we'll just do that so we don't forget. And now it's just the same as before where we just designed this sort of brick pattern along the top edges, making sure to leave in a nice little corner piece as well. So I'll go ahead and do that. And again, making sure to remember to keep this highlight to the right side and also the underside. The next is really simple. It's just these kind of empty wall edges for the left side and the right side that follow this kind of L path like this. So again, I'm just going to speed this a little bit up. You'll see what I'm doing though. And that's our offset walls complete. What we could do, we could just go ahead and erase these bottom corner pixels again, just to add that rounded look to the edges. So that's going to be our dungeon tile set completed. Now I'm going to go ahead and import this into Unity and I'll just design a quick map using the tile map system. So I've got my tile map inside of Unity now. I'm just going to set this up as we always would. And if you want a tutorial on how to set up a tile map in this way just drop us a comment below and I'll make sure that I can sort that out for you. So now we have all of our tile pieces and we can just go ahead and draw on our tile map. So I'll quickly knock something up now. I'll speed this up. So we see I've just added in the floor tile to where I want that to be. Now I'm going to go in with my upper wall edge and just start filling in all of these upper edges. Now we may end up overwriting some of these but this is just a bit of a placeholder for now. So again we'll do the same with the rest of the edge pieces. Now as you can see I've left some empty spaces, now this is where our inverted pieces are actually going to come in handy. So we'll just take this inverted upper left and it fits perfectly into this little gap here. So as you can see all I'm doing I'm just painting, mixing, matching everything that I've got and every one of these tiles perfectly align with each other. Oh, I tell you what, I've done it wrong. I've only gone and done it wrong. I've missed the upper walls out. I am sorry. So we just grab our tile palette back. I thought I'd missed something. Uh, on the top of every one of these floor tiles, we're going to want our wall. Now, this is actually going to look a lot better when I've not actually completely messed it up. And then we can go in now that we've got those upper walls in and just add in the relevant pieces again. There we go, now that looks a lot better. can just add in the walls there as well. So a lot of this is just eyeballing it, making sure that you've got everything looking as you want it. Nobody gets it right first time, but there we go. That's looking a lot better. So I'll leave a link in the description where you can download this little sample set. And I'll also leave a link in the description to the full 900 tile set on my itch page as well. I hope this has been useful for you and I'll see you again soon. Thanks for watching guys. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe and follow us on Facebook and Instagram for more bites as Unity hints and tips.